What's up, everybody? It's Critical. I'm playing Strip Poker Night at the inventory for the PC. Selected the podcast setting. Let's do this shit. Now, I heard there's nipples in this game, and when I heard that, I screamed out, yippee, skipped over to my computer to play it. Unfortunately, you can't show nipples on YouTube, so currently I've sat through 71 episodes hoping to find some. Hopefully, episode 72 is the one. I'm joined by my co-host, Namasp, a.k.a. Beef Testosterone. The one with guest star and titty connoisseur, my mans. By the way, I'm on my alt account, Spanana. All right. Well, good to be back, everyone. I can't confirm. <laughs> All right. Um, so, my mans, you've done quite a lot for Spanati. Why don't you give us a little bit of a rundown about you know, your current projects and things you've brought to our wonderful game? Because you have a quite extensive uh, pedigree on things you produced for Spanati. Yes, I do. Okay, so let's see. So my first character ever, actually, was Derpina for the April Fool's event, which um, so, so I had just joined the community. I actually learned about Spanati like a little earlier than that, like a few months earlier through the Newgrounds version. And then... I joined and I was interested in doing development. I was interested in doing Aqua. Um, yeah, I was interested in making her from the very beginning. But the April Fool's event was coming up soon. So I thought, hey, uh, since this event is more like for fun, this could be an opportunity to like learn how to make a character without a lot of stakes tied to that character. So that's why I made Derpina as my first character, both because I thought it would be fun and because I thought it would be a good way to like um, learn how to make characters, you could say. Learn like what to do, what not to do, what can work, what can't work. And overall, just familiarize myself a little with the character editor. So yeah, I, I made Derpina and I had planned to make Aqua after her. And I even had Aqua's character file and everything. It had like 800 lines, if I remember correctly, but I lost my previous laptop. So uh, I, I didn't lose it exactly, it just stopped working. So I lost that character file, but I think that was for the better because it wasn't very Oof. good. So even still, it's, it's all, it always sucks to lose that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do wonder what I what those lines would look like. Sometimes I wish I could like go back and see what I actually wrote and see you know how far I've come because I'm pretty sure I didn't do a great job, but I would I've done better now. But anyway, yeah. So I made Derpina and then I was going to make Aqua, but a um, Toon Rider, a guy called Toon Rider, he approached me to. Uh, what was it? I think it was to help him write Fluttershy or something. And I was like, uh, sure, yeah, I love Fluttershy, so I'll do it. Um, but, um, well, not to be mean, but I don't think he really had a good understanding of her character. So eventually I kind of just took over all of Fluttershy, right? So I, like, I, just, I just wrote all of her and... The lines that he had made, uh, I don't think she has any of those anymore because I, I'm sorry, but I just don't think they were very good. I think I think Fluttershy didn't work like that. So that's why I made Fluttershy. She was kind of like a surprise character. I didn't plan to make her. It just kind of happened. Um, but I am glad that I made her because I think that many people would make Fluttershy in a different way from how I made her, which is like less consensual, I think. That would make things a little more awkward. But yeah, I made Flourish High for that reason. And then after that, that's when I started to make characters more because I wanted to rather than just because it kind of happened. So Mari Setogaya, um, I had idea, an idea to make her again from an early stage. I think maybe even before I made Derpina. Um, but you know, I was like, I wasn't sure if I was going to make uh, Mari Setogaya. Nord made a model for me 
for her. So then I decided to make her, and well, the rest is history. She's now a very successful main roster character, and I am very happy, very flattered that people like her so much. So she's yeah, one she's of the there. most successful recent characters, I'd say. Oh yeah, for so, sure. Yeah, definitely one of the most successful, and I think part of it must have to do with the fact that like. Um, I've made a lot of content for her. Like she has her base form, her transformations, which add more to that. And she has a lot of uh, costumes. Like she has one for every event, actually, except for April Fools. So, so that probably also helps a little bit with like, and also that she's literally from a hentai source material. So that also helps yeah. with the kind of game that's going to be. I think that makes her really accessible. And I think that ends up being like in great service to her. So like, I think, I think, um, Fluttershy obviously is, is, is that is really great. And I think you did a really great job with her. I also think that, um, you know, set guy is really quite, quite good too. And just definitely leaning into the right game material. There's no shyness about it, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, I think I definitely think that, and I am happy for that. Um, but yes, I I made Setogaya, and then after that, for this year's April Fool, or was it last year? Well, anyway, I made their penis sister, their pet, um, which is basically a more depressed and cynical version of her. Basically, their pina is supposed to be like the typical memer person, you know, from before 2010, how pretty much all all the people in the internet were like with the lol, raw, random humor. Their pet is more like a take on how jaded people become nowadays. You know, it's like, oh, things are so different now. I'm so tired now. That's kind of their pet. That's what she's supposed to be. So she's not as much of a joke character as their Pina. And she's I, she was mostly made to be a companion to their Pina. But I do think that I tried to make her like a tired office lady. But obviously, she's still like mostly a joke character and mostly meant to be uh, their Pina's partner. So I don't blame anyone if they don't like play her without their Pina, because it is true that she doesn't have a lot to say without their Pina. And even with their Pina, she's, she's just kind of like, she's tired, she has a headache, that's her deal. And I just kind of made her again for fun because I thought it would be interesting to make a partner for their Pina. And then finally, uh, the one that we'll talk about a little later today, um, now, I made Aqua thanks in no small part to Nord, who has made her model again. So he has helped me make the model of two characters. So yes, I, I have now finally Aqua has hit the main roster. No, not the main roster. Jeez. Hopefully that will happen soon, but she has hit the testing well, roster. By the time this podcast, by the time this is edited and released, you, you never know what could happen. True, true. You never know. I mean, well, I don't think I'm going to make her hit main that quickly but i do hope to have her hit main sometime soon hopefully hopefully before my next university quarter period begins i think that would be nice but mm. we'll have to see about that but uh yes yeah. i i I've, i'm finally finally aqua is here she was originally who i was going to make but you know things got derailed but now i am finally here and i do want to say I have more characters planned. I have, uh, I'm definitely, one that I'm definitely going to make is I'm going to remake Navi from Zelda, from The Legend of Zelda, from Ocarina of oh. Time. I am remaking her uh, with a model that Nomelet has provided. But, you know, that's Ooh. obviously stuff for the future. So I just wanted to mention that I have other projects aside from Navi as well. But I do want to say that, thankfully, I do still have a lot of ideas and I do still want to make characters. So I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. But yes, Aqua is finally here. She's now finally there. It feels good to finally have finally. her. Here. And I hope <laughs> I hope that when she hits main, people will be pleased. Now now Union can be abandoned, just like in canon. <laughs> no, I'm not I'm not going to abandon her. The full but, table is available. But yes. Finally, it's it's Aqua Time Baby. That was my username a little a little while ago. So yes, it's finally time for that. Yeah, and uh, and we're happy to to finally have you here on the podcast. You are um, one of the most prolific and successful, uh, fairly new developers running around. So 
it's it's great to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So as we get started, um, so first for today's episode, we're going to go into uh, the usual defying gravity. Please note, I do not actually know anything about Wicked. You, uh, you um, missed. What's up? We got to do, we got to do keys to get first. Oh, okay. I, uh, there it is on the agenda. Why don't you go ahead and go into it? Cause I have not touched it in, uh, in a great long time. Yeah. So th- there's a, there's sort of a general, uh, a, a bit of information that we should talk about that we maybe could have mentioned last time, but I wanted to make sure that the updates had slowed down. There was a, like a period of about a month or two where, um, Viz just went ultra instinct and decided to fix everything about Kisuke ever. And uh, apparently... Yeah, well, it was absolutely insane. This. Getting back in the saddle and fixing even more. But uh, we were on, I think, Kisuke 105 for a while of the of the local version. And now we've uh, gone all the way... There's an official release of 106, official Fnatic release anyway. Who knows what Pochi's doing? He's just adding like little pockets behind a paywall and shit. It's sad to watch. There's also alpha releases of various uh, K- uh, Kisuke 107 versions. And the main things that uh, were added in these uh, recent Kisuke uh, updates is basically everything you could ever want. It's, uh, like I'm sure there's more stuff, but uh, we, we have yet to see its full potential in terms of like what, what new things can be accomplished in posing. I think a lot of it is just it's more so it's taking something that used to be really awkward to do and is now just making it super easy and integrated into Kisuke itself. Main things to point out so far are new hands, like like new hand settings. He just like drew in. Like there's one where it's like uh, like to put your hands on your hips, but he like removed the pinky so it looks a little bit more like they're wrapping their hands around. There's even like a blank one. So you can add their little their their little hook hand. You can have your uh, Miki from Katawa Shoujo. That would have been a lot easier. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> just uh, just to uh, ha- having your little um, uh, your 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 pirate role play. Um, there's like arm and hand sliders. Like finally, like male models. Oh my god, are no longer really. Are just like male models. Male models are no longer just like one one of the like the the ten labors of Hercules or whatever. It's like you can actually just like extend and enlarge just individual parts of hands and and uh, and arms and things. It's actually really incredible too, because I mean, you know, you look back at some of like the ancient Kisuke attack, like mouse, and just this would make his job way easier. Well, mouse. And those are some good-looking models too. Mouse just used like five models for any given. Well, like, like all his characters really used uh, feet and hand attachments to get bigger hands. Yeah, so he's getting infamously as baby hands. Well, like, you know, not not. It's not even just like an animation. How big do your hands need to be to show up? Like really, <laughs> they're too small. Like this. This is something that like. Maybe he was trying to go for like K-On Chibi art style or whatever, but it's legitimately like if you just took a random person off the street and asked them to draw a human, that's one of the things that almost everyone gets wrong. People draw the hands and feet too small. Small hand humiliation. Yeah, like your hands should be about like as big as your face. And on Kisuke models, they never are, especially with those giant ass default heads. And there's also um, leg sliders to do the same thing to legs. And more important, more importantly, there's leg rotation, like actual rotation, the way that like the arms do. Wow, they're not just like uh, like ninety nine preset leg positions. Which is, that is something I was really looking forward to. Yeah. Oh my God. So it's uh, it's the golden age has arrived. You know, the platinum age has arrived. The mage, the the galactic age, this is like Spinati space travel. Who knows? I mean, I I don't think people have, have fully unlocked it just yet. We're we're sort of testing the waters, but I'm looking forward to trying it myself. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, this is not this is not the best lineup to, to talk about these updates because the mask you famously have not really done any of your characters' art for a while. I guess you did like 
posing for Marinette and stuff. But actually, the newest Marinette's like all all phone box. So this is okay. actually no, I've, I've done, I have not. I've done like dick amount of work. Art art was never your passion. No, you know design design and well coded characters also wasn't my passion. But delivering a fuckload of content. Twenty seven. 2017 Marinette was famous for her interpretive dance. God, I, 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 I don't know. I can't, I can't defend myself, so I won't even try. Hey, look, man, like, next to the other characters on the roster at the time, it didn't look that egregious. It's the thing. There's time and a place for everything. But the time and the place we're in today is now. You copy what you see. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think Mymans has... I, I don't think you're that much of an artist either. Like you said, like... A, Nord helped you with a lot of stuff. And yeah, I, I think help with Fluttershy. Um, let me think. Okay, so mainly the art stuff I've done, I made. Uh, I'm mostly a poser. I mostly pose my characters, not so much do their art. I did do the art for their Pina and their pet, but you know, their art is pretty simple, pretty default mm-hmm. Kizike stuff. Um, but something I do take credit for is that I did make uh, Mari Setogaya's transformations and all of her costumes. So that's Ooh, where yeah. most of my Kizike experience is. So, yeah. I, d- I didn't mean to imply that you haven't done anything. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry. I don't take offense to that. Yeah. Um, so I actually have been having a pretty deep dive into Kisuke in recent months, um, model making and posing for uh, something we're going to talk about in episode 73. Whoa. But I have oh. been exclusively working in 105 because I saw all these updates drop right after I got started with that shit. It's like, you know what? I just need to get this done. I'm not going to get bogged down in the new stuff. Let's just focus. And I'll figure it out later. So yeah, I, I have not tried it, uh, most of these myself, except for some of the older updates. There's a couple other things to point out. Um, custom ribbons and belts were added. Mostly like um, like belts are more awkward to manipulate than ribbons, and they're also laggier because Pochi didn't code them right. So Vision took some of the assets for for like some of the more useful belt assets and converted them into additional ribbons. So those exist. And he also just made a whole bunch of like custom ribbons for very useful shapes that just like were notoriously difficult to make with the with the ribbons that existed, such as like a semicircle and just various like trapezoids and, and things like that. And they're just like default blank white ribbons, solid color, very useful for like filling in space and constructing things. Bug fixes, because I remember in 105, like color picking was kind of weirdly buggy. Um, face mark attachment points for eyes, which is something I have not really experimented with yet, but apparently you can like attach face marks to like eyes now. I don't because I a, a lot of yeah um, you can you can attach face marks to eyes to make it easier to make custom eyes. I'm I don't know how manipulable that is, uh, but I'm sure it, it it would still expedite expedite the the work process that I've been doing with a. Heavy, heavily face marked custom eyes. I'll have to give that a shot. I mean, at the very least, if if your character has like a custom like eye or iris design, I remember that was something that um, Ryuko's model was always missing. She has like the little gear design on her irises, sort of sort of look, and um, that would have helped. And um, finally, there's the there's the biggest for me personally. It it's it seems minor, but. Um, holding control shift and then clicking on a ribbon will just take you to that slot, which first oh of all, my God, that's that like way. actual, actual fun witchcraft at this point. Good God. That's amazing. I can't believe how easily he implemented that too, but yeah. Viz, so Viz could, is just you, like, a, Viz is a loving and giving God most of the time. It doesn't sound like a lot, but. There were like untold wasted hours in Kizuke just because you you try to like build a shape out of ribbons and hair pieces and shit. And then you try to go or belts and then you try to go back later and you're like, what the fuck? Where which which belt is that? God damn it. Which is it? Fuck. And you just have to like literally yeah. click on and off every single one until you just find where it was again because it's just a mess. And being able to just click, control shift click and take you there is 
again, yeah. I haven't. I haven't. I mean, I think if this is how this works, like, this is going to be like ten times faster, legit. Yeah, like I think if this is how it worked, um, you know, I when I was getting into Spanish, I would have been a lot more inclined to actually learn how to do it versus like, eh, I don't feel like doing this, so I'm not going to. You you could always you could always click to like delete ribbons, but it didn't take you to what slot it was. So right. The only way you'd ever find anything is if you had already used all 99 slots and then you click to delete one and then you just look at one's empty. <laughs> oh, so God. Fantastic. That does seem pretty, pretty but, bad. Yeah, anyway, hopefully, hopefully in future episodes, I'll be able to talk more about how, how uh, these custom options have really opened up the possibilities because I'm, I'm, I'm going to be diving deep into that. Ooh, all right. I think it's time to move on into characters, though. The mask would take us away. Uh, take us off the ground. All right. Well, with that passion, without passionate development, uh, let's move on to Alphaba from Wicked. Um, so I think last time when we were reviewing her, she was still really pretty nascent in the scheme of things. I'm glad to see we we didn't cover her. We didn't. No. Oh, we, we must have just talked about it like off camera then or something. But listen, Al- Alphaba is. Um, so if you've read or seen Wicked, um, El- Alphaba is ba- Wicked is like an ad- is like a it was like a soft reboot or not not a soft reboot. It was one of those it was one of those like edgy like uh, reinterpretations of a villain for, like from before it was cool. Oh, got it. You know you know how you have shit like Cruella now, where it's just like, oh, what if the villain was actually secretly misunderstood? That's like Wicked is like that for the Wicked Witch of the West <laughs> from the Wizard of Oz. Oh, okay. But it's actually like good. Oh, okay. So that, that's who Alphaba is. So her, her whole life has just been misfortune. Uh, from being born green and having like sharp teeth and shit and then melting because a uh, Kansas girl threw water on her. But like, well, that just sounds normal. But like, uh, yeah, and her misfortune continued because she's been out for a while, but she ended up on the tail end of Last Agenda. So we just said we would get to her next time. And in that time, she has actually made it to the main roster. <laughs> But we're gonna we're gonna be Gosh. talking about her for the first time today. Well, well, <laughs> well, we we did make it to her then. Um, so Maimon, so as the guest, why don't you uh, go and open? Then we'll you know I'll go then. Yes, of course. So um, I am not familiar with Alphabas uh, source material. I think most people aren't actually. Most people here, I am because it's like a little more niche. But yes, I am not familiar with it. But I do think that uh, she's a solid character. We don't have that many witches in the game, and much less characters that have like big witch uh, witch hats. Most that's mostly relegated to um, old costumes. The, ma- the so, academias, various characters. Yeah, yeah. That variety. So. So I think she's a solid character. I think that her dialogue and her lines, they're all uh, good stuff and everything. But at the same time, I think that she has a little of an issue where she tends to fall into the background. Because, like, she... Like, how can I explain her? Her personality isn't, like, super eccentric. And her posing isn't extremely... Um, what's the word? Uh, it isn't super expressive either, especially with the dress, but you know that's understandable because it's really hard to make characters expressive with big dresses. Um, but you know, over like she's a witch, but not that many things about her tell me that she is a witch. Like she just she just kind of acts like a normal person for the most part. I don't think that there's anything that's like super stand out for her. Like she's she's a good character. She's definitely a nice addition. But that's kind of that's kind of like the thing with her. I feel like she she kind of falls into the background of it. Like when when she's surrounded by other characters, it feels like the other characters have more to say as opposed to her. But I don't want to say that like one personal thing that I don't like about her like this is this is not like objective this is just 
personal. I don't like that she takes off her witch hat so soon. I don't I don't like that. I, I wish she kept it on for longer. Because I think she looks better with the witch hat on, honestly. I think I think it looks good on her. So I don't know, maybe it would be nice if like there was like an evergreen alt for her where she just keeps the witch hat on and that's literally all that changes because I personally would play her a lot more if she did that because I think she looks better with the witch hat on. But beyond that, yeah, I think the main issue that I have with her is that she she doesn't like make too many super interesting comments. She feels like a bit of an of like a character that tends to have those lines where you feel are lines any character could say, right? But that's like, you know, it, it is uh, eight's first character. So, you know, obviously it's not going to be like a super amazing character because, you know, when you're just starting out, you are just kind of figuring out how things go, how to write dialogue. So, of course, you know, it's really hard to get things just right on the first go but if uh eight is willing to update her significantly i would personally be interested in like him mostly making so that her personality shines through more in her dialogue like a, a philosophy i have for making characters for spinati is that you have to think about what makes you love the character enough that you would want to put them in the game and how can you make other people fall in love with the character like how you have fallen in love with her or him or them maybe it's more than one character but the point is yes um i think that that's the main thing i want her personality to stand out more but Considering, you know, that it's Eight's first character, he did both the art and the writing, and uh, he, she had a lot of feedback, a lot of criticism when she first arrived. In that sense, I think that it's very, like, a very good job on U8 for, for having made her model and her writing and everything and getting her on main because, you know, not everybody that, like, gives Devin a shot actually gets their characters on main. So the fact that you did, I do want to congratulate Eight for doing that. And yeah, that's basically what I have to say. That that is that is something I wanted to point out. Yeah, is that is that eight? This is this is a, a first effort in both writing and art. Uh, so you know, may, maybe there's some some rookie mistakes in there, but uh, like you, you have to sort of grade it on a curve, right? In terms of like how the the average like new uh, writer slash artist does. That's something I always really champion is is uh, doing both sides of the of the spectrum there. But I'll let uh, I'll let you talk to Masp. Yeah, um, no, I, I actually was going to chime in on that as well because it's like this is like as far as I understand it and follow developments so closely. I, I think her first character is actually very very good, and I think that there is like some genuine criticisms around like ah, uh, you know, how is she more distinct? But I think the biggest problem she has, and I and I'm looking at this with you know 100 culpability for myself. I think she just needs some more inbound lines, really. Like, it looks like she's definitely trying to start conversations with different characters, but there's not that, like, you know, kind of crack shipping edge that some characters get, where it's like, oh, yeah, of course, like, you know, like if Alphaba and Felix were like super into each other, that would be something like, because, you know, he's a cat, she's a witch. Okay, make it, make that work. Like, there's certain things you can do with that that I think aren't necessarily eight's fault. I think maybe my encouragement to them as a as a creator would be to reach out directly to people whose content you like and say, hey, I want to write some more lines with you. How can we get that going? And people tend to be very receptive to that. Otherwise, yeah, I think as far as like a first character guys, like she's she's great. I would like to see her keep getting developed. I also think that like, you know, my man's you had your own growth process where you started with uh, Fluttershy but made your way to other stuff. I think that could be a good win condition for eight as an author as well is to make some more stuff absolutely i agree i think that um eight has a lot of potential for any other future product um, projects i mean and me personally i i do think that i agree that she could use more inbound lines and hey eight if you're listening and you want to do any lines with my characters don't don't feel scared of reaching out or any depths really most depths are very approachable and me personally, I would definitely love to write uh, interactions with Alpha because, you know, I love writing interactions with other characters. And, you know, if the other Deb is willing to respond, then all the better. 
Yeah. I mean, like that's, how, I think that's like something all three of us have gone through is just like the, the lines you get the most out of are the ones that you just are able to write really quickly because you can bounce back and forth. So I don't think there's a lot of merit to that. Um, yeah. So Stan, what do you, what do you think as far as like closing thoughts and like, so I was actually very pleasantly surprised to to see this character of of all characters. I mean, it's definitely not one you would expect. You know, it's all full of anime and uh, failing that like um, right. Western animation. So Wicked was originally a book, um, a very strange book. I actually am familiar with Wicked. I, I read I read the book like in middle school where I was, and Wicked is like you wouldn't think so, right? But Wicked is very much a book for adults. It's like. <laughs> Full of like racism and like secret police killing people and like weird oiled up sex scenes, fucking bizarre. Yeah, go figure. She she has like an illegitimate child and like she doesn't even like know if it's her kid because she like had it while she was in a coma or something. She lives in like a convent for years, and at the end of the book, she just fucking dies because Dorothy throws water on her. <laughs> Super sad. Rough. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> like, so it has a lot of uh, interesting lore, and I think he did something really smart with uh, he sort of adapted um, like elements from the book, but mostly he took it from the more popular um, interpretation or more popular portrayal, which is the Broadway musical. Uh, which is a it just which is a light uh, it's a lot like lighter and and softer and <laughs> easier to get behind she she doesn't turn into a craggly old hag at the end she doesn't die at the end <laughs> another positive and it has it actually like weirdly has like more di- di- direct like connections to the wizard of oz with like some of the characters but anyway the main draw of alphaba like as a character is that she's kind of well, she, you know, she's obviously very weird and different because she's like green and uh, there's a lot of weird circumstances concerning her birth uh, and, and family. But she's very intelligent. She's sort of like the, the, the nerdy, sarcastic girl and contrasted with um, Glinda, you know, Glinda the Good Witch, who's sort of like the preppy, <laughs> uh, airheaded, dumb, blonde, bimbo type. And uh, it's the musical is a lot about their unlikely friendship. And I think that, like, even if the Spinati Alphaba here doesn't have, I don't, I, she might not have enough content, but I actually think what's there is, is pretty good. I saw a lot of that, that nice, sarcastic wit, that, that, which I think is a very strong foundation to go off of. So I enjoyed reading her dialogue whenever I did. I, she did repeat herself a lot. So, I, yeah, I definitely think it's a case of not having enough. She had a, a bit of a turbulent development history too, because you know, like you said, this was the developer's first crack at it. She had like several different models that she went through, and she went through them quickly. Um, Eight seems like a, a developer that works very quickly and kind of burns out and moves on to something else, which hopefully um, he still feels committed to to stick with her and uh, expand her a little bit, because I I do think she could be in uh, somewhat of a better place just just from from having a lot more content, like you said. She had a lot of fun little uh, Ozisms, very, very strange, like mimble wimble kind of words, fantastical kind of words that she throws in there. It's uh, it adds some good texture without um, being totally incomprehensible. I think, like the art right now, the the model that I posted, it's it's kind of weird because I've seen developers kind of be hard on it and, and criticize because like the the nose for example you try to make you try to give her like a big hook nose but that's tough to depict from the front so what you get is something that doesn't quite look congruous with the rest of her face you know it looks like a little more detailed and softer than the rest of her face and like the the dress you know she's got this big poofy dress but for someone who, who's used Kisuke a lot I know exactly what ribbon that is and I can tell you just copy pasted a bunch of that all over her <laughs> Her legs. I mean, it it, it, it did work though. Like, it does give the uh, the impression correctly. So, I think to that end, it's pretty good. That's what I'm saying. And she's got like the key, right. the default hat and the default broom. But it's like, yeah, I as a developer see that. But like, as a player, I would probably find all this perfectly serviceable. Right. And like, what exactly is she supposed to look like facially wise? 
I don't know. That kind of depends. In the musical, I think she's definitely um, meant to be a lot prettier <laughs> than in the book. So if you make just like a green girl with a big nose, it's probably fine. I mean, I couldn't really criticize you too hard for it. Let's see. Anything else? Yeah, more generic lines. She had some good lore. She she often talked about like the setting of Oz in general. What I think she could use a little bit more of is some name dropping, ironically enough. Um Wow, really it's, ever it's the about first time that the first time that advice has ever come out on this podcast in the history of its existence. She must name drop more. You know, she's kind of like alluding to her friends a lot, but uh, I think she could use like just a couple more names because like she started talking about Glinda at the very end, mostly about how she wants to to bang her during the forfeit. But I didn't see a single mention of her beforehand, except for like maybe one allusion to blondes. Mm. So yeah, I think you gotta. I think you gotta build that up a little bit more. In general, she seems. I guess it's a common fan interpretation that she's like attracted to stupid people, because like her two. To be fair, if you're coming to Cincinnati, you're her, you're in her a main good place. Male and female love interests are both kind of stupid. Well, I mean, that's you come if you're in Cincinnati, you're in the right place. A lot of, a lot of folks with uh, less going on. A lot of adorkables. And, yeah. Final thoughts. Yeah. Um, masturbation was a little bland. She her she her legs were too closed and her hand was like too far down. You can't see anything good. I'm always a big proponent of that. It's like uh, diddly do is apparently the name of this pose. But you can tell diddly do is the name of the pose. Just looks like she's she's shoving her whole fist up there. I don't know. Well, maybe maybe she's into that. Uh, who are we to judge? One thing you mentioned is that she kind of faded into the background by the end, my man's, and I think one of the reasons for that is that she's a bit too composed right up to the end. That's something I suggest for a lot of um, masturbation lines is that you really got to get into like the stuttering and the breathiness, because if they're too eloquent, it just sounds like they're, they're faking it. And I think in the finished stage, she should, um, she should change it up a little um, visually. But I like the, uh, the overall character idea of like unique and strange looking kind of potentially like um homely looking girl little monstrous little um you know unconventional beauty you know doesn't have the biggest boobs but she she's smart and she's got a good head on her shoulders and she kind of makes it work and it's just like yeah this is who i am and you got to accept it so strong outside the box character pick what I would say. And I'm, I'm glad she's on main and I hope she gets more development. Agreed. And to kind of close that out, like, I think, I think these characters, like, you know, we're going to go talk about Aqua in a second, but so it, it really does go to show that, you know, you have the, uh, you know, these big popular characters that, you know, obviously everyone wants us, everyone really excited about, and if they're executed on well, do super great. But, you know, the alpha buzz and the turn dots of the world are definitely what makes, kind of snatty exciting it's like you know every time you go to an ice cream shop yeah you want to probably be able to order chocolate and strawberry and you know all that other stuff but you know sometimes you're like oh what is belgian guava what is snarduk sourdough and just sort of why is it you know, so expensive it, yeah so it just adds texture and flavor like that that i think just makes the game what it is so good job Okay, and with that, um, you know, let's go on to the highlight reel of today with our, you know, wonderful developer, my man's on here to talk about Aqua Konosuba. So because this is your character, I think uh, Span and I will go first and then we'll have you chime in at the end with your thoughts and development history or, you know, at your discretion, if you'd like to go first and talk us through, you know, what drove you to do this and then we can comment. That's also fine. Up to you. Since when do I go first? This is my podcast. I'm not going first. My man's, you go first. This is your no, podcast. Sa- no, no. I'm saying my man. I'm saying my man's can go first if he wants to. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I think I'll go first. Okay. So, well, um, Aqua, where do I even begin with this idiot? <laughs> because she is an idiot. Make no mistake. Okay. So, the thing with Aqua, right? is that, well, as far as Spinati goes, she has always been one of the most requested characters for the game. I 
think at one point she was top one, and last time I checked, she was like top three, without counting Shrek. I think Shrek has always been top one, which is funny. <laughs> but yes, anyway, Aqua has always been a highly requested character, especially with like Megumi, Kasuma, and now that Darkness was added, people were like, where's Aqua? And yeah, I've always wanted to make her, as I told you at the beginning of the podcast, I, she was actually the first character I planned to make, like for real. And now she's finally here. So why did I make Aqua? Well, obviously, I do love her a lot. I'm not, the thing is, I'm not really sure how to articulate why I like Aqua so much. I think I just find her very entertaining. Like any scene in Konosuba that has Aqua in it will just be entertaining because Aqua will be there to either be stupid or to be funny or to be cute. So I feel like there's just not you, a single... Uh, you explain for the uninitiated a little bit about who she is? Yes. Uh, hold on. No worries. Got to get your notes. The other, the other thing, uh, I, I don't know. The way I've heard Konosuba described, big book of Konosuba lore. Yeah, the, the way I've heard Konosuba described by someone was just like it's, it's always sunny in Philadelphia for anime waifus, and I, I, I've always found that very compelling. Okay, sorry, I am back. So, um, you told me to explain what Konosuba was, right? Well, just who Aqua is in Konosuba. Ah, yes, yes, right. So, okay. So the deal with Aqua is that she's a goddess of water and she's a super stock-up snotty goddess. She she thinks very highly of herself and very lowly of uh, most people. Although she is like a nice person with like normal human beings. She's mostly nice, although if she's with a demon, she's an absolute bitch. But anyway, the point is she is... She's a goddess, and uh, in the events of Aqua, she gets like brought down to a fantasy world. So she gets isekai with the main protagonist, Kasuma, and she and hijinks ensue, basically. So the deal with Aqua is that because she's dumb, because she's an idiot, she, uh, even though she's a goddess, she tends to cause more trouble than what she fixes. And and that's kind of like the general gist of it. It's like Aqua is an idiot. She's she's dumb. Her intelligence is really low, but all of her other stats are really high. So she she, she like helps, but she also messes things up because she's so dumb that she makes dumb, short sighted mistakes that could have easily been like avoided. And that's like that's where a lot of the comedy from Konosuba comes from, basically. And look at her baby ass Kisuke hands in this in this gif. Why are her hands so small? Because <laughs> she's a guy. She doesn't need bigger hands. Anyway, yeah, talk a bit about um, the, the creative process and what you wanted to do with her. And what do you think of her so far in, in Spinetti? Okay, so um, with Aqua, I think that in a sense, she's kind of like a culmination of what I've learned as far as Spinetti writing goes up until now. Because I will be completely honest and say that um, sometimes when I play with like Fluttershy and uh, Mari Setogaya, I mean, it makes sense on one hand because I'm their dev, but I kind of like get bored, right? Like, I, like there's some lines where I'm like, this is boring. This is boring. me. I don't, this could be better. They're, they could have more to say. So hopefully I think like, I hope to make it so that Aqua has uh, more lines where like it's interesting to read her personality shines through and it's and it's less of something that you just kind of read and it's like yeah yeah okay i get it but you know obviously it's it's like generally speaking it's pretty hard to avoid having like at least some lines that are like somewhat uninteresting because you know the game has its low points and its high points it's like a roller coaster. So, you know, obviously when a character, when characters are just kind of checking out their hands and they're uh, right after someone finished stripping, then nobody has really showed anything interesting. It's just accessories and, and like socks and hats and stuff. Obviously that's like a point of the game where like nothing like super 
arousing is happening, nothing super interesting is happening. So, you know, usually that's the point where like characters do exposition and, you know, talk about non-sexual stuff. And then later on, they do talk more about sexual stuff and things start to get more like immediately interesting because people start to get naked and yada, yada. But yeah, anyway, so the point is that with Aqua, my main goal was to like make her leap up to like how much I love her and the expectations people have for her because I don't think that like you can make Aqua and then just kind of like wing it. I think like if you're gonna make Aqua, you have to do like a couple of things that that like are integral to her character. So like for example, was it tedious to like make a lot of extra lines for like demonic characters or undead characters? Well, yes, it took time to do that, but I feel like it's important for Aqua to be really, really mean to those characters because that's a big part of who she is. And similarly, for Aqua to have a lot of lines where she complains, where she cries, where she feels like she's better than everyone else and stuff like that. Like, I hope that I could, like, capture her personality well, because obviously I'm her writer, so, you know, it's easy to not see your own mistakes, but also, you know, it's easy to criticize oneself because everyone is their own worst critic, as they say. But my, my objective was to, like get her personality down because I feel like many people would just like make Aqua but like miss some of the nuance to her character because it's true that like her character is like a comedy character and like she has an easy to understand personality but at the same time it's not like she's just an idiot and she's a super confident goddess and that's it. There's more to her than that and I hope to like you know be able to achieve that when she hits main roster to, to be like this is the aqua that Spanari has and the aqua that Spanari has is a really good aqua. That's like my main objective to be like finally aqua is here, but she's not just some aqua. She's the aqua, and you know she's my number one waifu. She's the number one anime character that I love. So of course that I want to put in that effort. So you know obviously aqua has been a group effort. Her model has been entirely made by uh, by Nord. So, of course, Nord, I am very thankful. Without him, this could not have been done. And also her infamous butt pose, thanks to Horse Cat and animated by Unboro. So, Spanari is yeah, a... Yeah, that, that animation is, is fucking fire, dude. It's good shit. I am I am really happy that it was put into the game thanks to everyone because because I, because the other before she hit testing I was talking with someone about how I was going to put her in Spanati and they were like does she have the pose and I was like unfortunately not but then on that same day um I started to figure out wait what if she did have the pose what if she could have it right and now she does, and I'm really, really happy about that because I think that that pose really does a lot for her because it's it's super special and it's like straight from the anime and it's like one of the things that people really remember Aqua for. It's like beyond just that she has a nice ass, she has that one specific scene where she shakes it at the camera and people are like, Jesus Christ, that's, that looks amazing. So I am really happy that that could be put into the game proper and... Yes, just Aqua has been a group project. So, you know, any my, my closing comments, you know, is to to like any uh, potentially aspiring devs or new devs or even old devs that are like listening is that Spanati is not something that you have to tackle alone. And I think that the main reason that I am happy that Aqua was not my first character is because making other characters made it so that I gained like, connections and friends that could help me with bringing Aqua to life in a vision that I think could be like fully realized and be like, this is the Aqua that I was hoping I could make, but that I would not have been able to make if I was, if she was my first character, she would have not been nearly as good. She would not have reached the heights that I think she has reached. And that's because she wasn't my first character and I was able to obtain people that could help me make her so you know i think that that's an important thing it's like spanati is a group project it's a group effort it's a community-based game 
getting help from other people, nothing to be ashamed of, and being receptive to feedback and getting help from other people, absolutely. Just make sure that if you get help from other people, like you're thankful and you don't let them down because it's kind of shitty when you put in effort to help someone else with the project, but then it doesn't go anywhere. So like, you know, try to try to also do that, you know? Right. And that's, that's what I have to say about Aqua. Aqua is great and, you know, definitely feel the passion that went into it and glad she was, you know, later on in the cycle. So you could apply all that knowledge and definitely, definitely a lot of strong thought there. I, I really agree with the idea that this is a group project and should definitely, you know, keep you going on that. Um, yeah, as far as things, yeah, I, that, I, agree I, with, I, mean, uh, I agree with like, um, seeking feedback and criticism. I don't think everything this is necessarily a group effort. No, no, no. Like, I mean, I'm not saying you have to do everything like as a group. I'm saying that there's no shame in like, I can't do this on my own. So right. if you want to get help from someone else, if you can do it on your own, absolutely go ahead. There's there's some devs that basically tackle everything on their own and they, they do just fine. All I'm saying is that if like you're a new dev or even not a new dev and you're like, I don't think I can do this on my own or I think I would really struggle with this, you know, maybe there's someone that's going to help you out. So that's why I think it's important to keep in mind that Spanati is community based and it can be a group project, but it doesn't have to be. I'm just saying that it can be and that there's no shame in that. Okay. I also think, yeah, and I think Aqua, like, I mean, I think the results of this project are just super, you know, super, super great. Her lines are awesome. Um, she is one of those characters where I wish I were staying in the game a little longer to help develop, like, to target and engage with a little bit more. I just am not doing that, obviously. But I think my biggest things I like are the animated pose is fantastic. I also like that she doesn't just to, the people who write the Konosuba characters are really great to hew to the humor that makes them relevant without making them just a complete meme. And I think, like, for instance, Aqua really stands up for Darkness and Megumin, which is great. She's really mean to Kazuma, which is great. But she's also not just, like, a complete bitch all the time. She's a little bit of, like, a dumbass, too, which is nice. And she's just, she's genuinely, like, there's something of substance to Aqua, even if she would be kind of terrible to engage with in reality. So... Excellent portrayal. Thank you. Thank you. I am flattered. Okay. Now? Yeah, I think um, as far as this is like a collaborative um, effort goes, yeah, I think she definitely got the, the best of, of all, all of her uh, contributors. Because, you know, the, the art came from one source and the posing from another and the writing from another. And it, it's, all, it's all come together really well. And she benefits from all of it. Right off the bat, I just noticed like she had some good filtered lines, some good awareness. She was talking about like blue hair and schoolgirls on the table, or or in various other areas around the game, um, and her pride. The fact that she's so smug and full of herself means that it kind of pride, prideful characters sort of have an edge in that they always talk about themselves. So the the lore, the lore dumping from them feels a lot more seamless and uh, and not as stilted. So if she she gets to do that, sort of. Um, and I I wrote something here, and then as I was writing it, I I had a thought. It's like, oh, that's kind of weird, because so I said good expressions without being over the top. And I was like, wait, isn't this like Aqua, the, the funny meme girl, <laughs> who's always like crying and vomiting out rainbows and stuff? I was expecting it to be a little crazier. Maybe it was just the, the characters I put her with or, the, or how the game shook out. But yeah, I was actually expecting her to be a lot more over the top and, and crazy. And she, I mean, not that she didn't have like funny lines and in terms of like, um, like slowly losing her composure and, and such. But uh, yeah, I was, I was expecting her to get super cartoony and, and wacky. I actually, I do, I do, I do uh, want to address that. The reason that she doesn't have that many like super cartoony poses, and I mean, maybe she could have some more, but the main thing is that usually in the anime, what happens to her is that she's put into a very 
like dangerous or very inconvenient or embarrassing situation that usually she put herself into. And the thing with Spanati is that that's kind of like hard to have happen because it's just a card game, right? So like if she's crying, it's usually because like, oh, she she lost a lot of money. Uh, she broke something. Uh, monsters are chasing her, something like she got eaten by a frog in Spanati that doesn't happen unless it happens in a specific interaction. And, you know, if Aqua ends up having an interaction with a character that really warrants that cartooniness, that will be awesome. But the main reason for that is precisely because when in, in her source, in Konosua, when she gets like super over the top like that, it's usually because something like that's like physically endangering to her or, or on, on that like general vibe happens to her. That's that's usually why she gets so over the top. And in Spanati, because it's just like a little street poker card game, it's kind of hard to make that happen. So that's why she mostly just gets uh, super expressive with her crying and stuff when she loses because that's the moment where she gets impacted the most where it's like, God damn it, I'm a stupid idiot. I'm I'm such a disappointing goddess and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, because she's she's a crybaby and she's bitchy. So, so that's like so the that's main reason. The, so that's five Kona Super characters in Spinati, and none of them can really. Do what do you mean? Properly. I only see four. Wait, Megumin wait, can't blow are, anything up. Uh, are there, Union are, are there make five? Make a bunch of friends. They have the core four. Is there another one? Union. No, oh shit! Union's not. in the game. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I actually. Union. Oh no! I actually forgot. Oh, and, and forgetting wife? about Union is perfectly in character. Aqua doesn't get to fuck anything up and, and cry and go into hysterics. Um, Cosma gets to, to leer at girls and gets to be a pervert with no, and <laughs> with, with no uh, obstacles. Megamine can't blow anything up. Uh, Darkness gets to live out all of her fantasies and, and indulge, and Union gets to make friends. But none of them are right. She doesn't get whipped. Someone, someone should make her get whipped. That's what should happen with Darkness, because she would love it. <laughs> what now? She should get whipped. Mm. Rebbe yeah. used to do that. She that, that was her old job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Darkness gets to live out her fantasies. Megumin doesn't get to blow shit up. That's kind of like the thing, you know, because in Konosua, there's a lot of like super over-the-top situations. And it can be a little hard to translate that into Spanati because in Spanati, like real actual violence doesn't really happen because it wouldn't be very sexy. <laughs> so, you know. That's that's like a little thing that can happen with Konosuba characters where like a lot of the comedy comes from like physical comedy. So that's a thing that can happen. But I think that even so, I think all of the Konosuba characters are you know, they, they can they can manage to to scratch the itch and just translate the overall sense of humor of Konosuba to Spanari decently well. I mean, obviously I I'm a writer for Union and Aqua, so I I don't want to talk too much on them and be like, oh, yeah, I'm the greatest guy ever. But, you know, for for Megumin, Castle and Darkness, I think that in that sense, they're good. And I hope that Aqua and Union are also like that. Yeah. So uh, nice writing overall. And uh, I do want to praise the, the body detailing in particular. It's very uh, subtle and well done. I'm going to I'm going to be bad cop on on that butt shaking animation, though. It's it's not good enough. Only her butt shakes. Her torso needs to, to shake. Also oh my god! Out. You gotta have the counterbalance. It's, it's fine, dude. No. It's just Newton's third law, man. That bothers me. <sighs> if the ass is shaking one way, the torso has to go the other way. I, I I get what you mean. Actually, it's it's a very specific pose, and you know they can have more moving par parts. But I, I don't know if I'll do that. Maybe if Onboro was like. He wanted to help out because he's the one that animated the pose. He's the one that did that. Maybe, but um, I think I think I might like only if it's 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 like it, it'll be a far off thing if it happens because right now I think uh, it's more important to put focus on uh, writing because like right now I think that the main thing that I want to tackle actually before I go for uh, sponsorship with her is targets with other characters. Don't you don't you ever think you can put anything in Spinati without me criticizing it? Oh, just you wait. I will I will do it one of these days. You dastardly bastard you. It's a joke. Anyway, I think it's time to move on. Same. Um, 
Depending on feeling hungry after that, you know, specifically for donuts. But next on our list for today is Sweetheart from Omori. And I, I just got to say, um, my man, you're going to go ahead and get your thoughts in on this one. But like the, the Namas bitches are being scratched and it's uh, it's very interesting. All right. So my man, what do you think and about your, and your leg is going. You're, you're into the belly rub. Yeah, dude. It's like, wow. She's like a fucking weirdo with like a personality <laughs> disorder. What's not to love? Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's, I'm just like, yes. I'm just like, yes. <laughs> anyway. I agree. Okay, so well, first one thing that I just want to quickly say is that I really want to praise on Boro and Insijuani for what they did on her model because yeah. characters tend to be like uh, related mostly to their writers, right? You know, recently because the writers usually are the ones that talk the most about them and the ones that like do interactions with them with other devs and the ones that like update them. So. It makes sense that the writers tend to be the ones that people relate with the characters, but I just do want to make it so that proper credit goes to Omboro and Insijuani because they did a really good job on her model. I think it looks absolutely fantastic, especially the hair. And this they is a do- salt mine, by the way. It's the same writer as Aqua Grunt. Yes, he, he wrote Aqua Grunt. Yeah, goddamn. Like, every part of this character is just stellar. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, man. And they, and they do plan to give her... Uh, nude body more detailing in the future and the fact that they made a character that has a goddamn hole in their stomach i mean come on that you, you have to appreciate that dude. like that's not an easy task and like you you just know that shit was annoying to deal with as far as like posing goes i'm gonna assume that was a pipeline yeah i'm pretty sure it was a pipeline i think so you know i i just have to mention that like you know good job on the model to, to you guys Before because I forget, yeah. my, my criticism on that though is like sometimes the positioning of the hole does not show the things behind it which is like that that's my like fucking ocd shit but i do think like yeah anyway that's that's the only criticism i have yeah so just wanted to mention that for the model now of course the model is just one part of the uh, uh of the the character there's also the writing and you know the thing is that uh she was written by Saltmine, and he wrote Aquagrunt, and Aquagrunt is fantastic. But Saltmine actually, like, uh, he 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 wasn't really sure about Sweetheart. Like, you know, he when he when he was talking about how he was writing, he was like he wasn't sure. He just wanted people to like her. He was hoping he would do a better, a uh, good job. He was really worried about uh, grammar because he struggles with that a lot. He he made a lot of uh, grammatical mistakes with Aquagrunt. So he, he really wanted to avoid making those same mistakes with Sweetheart. And I think that she turned out really well. Like, I, he was really unsure about how she was going to be. He was really unsure about how people were going to lo- like like her from, from how he talked about her in the server. And I just, I just want to say, Saltmine, you did a great job. I think Sweetheart is an absolute banger of a character. Um, Standing next to like Mari from Omori, the other uh, main Omori c- character that is also yeah. really successful, I think she's going to just she just going to do just fine because Sweetheart tackles a different kind of niche. She she appeals to a different audience, but she there's also some overlap. But even then, they're both just really solid characters. I think that you're underselling yourself with how good your writing is. Like yeah, you make grammatical mistakes, but I mean you you can fix that. That's easy to fix. You just go back and you. And you put in the comas and you put in the, the the proper nouns. It's whatever. It doesn't matter as much as the main core writing. And I think that Saltmine is really good at that. You know, like he, he really gets, he nails down the personality for the character. I think he did that with, with, with Sweetheart. She has an interesting approach where she's not really attracted to the other players. She, she mostly just loves herself and she thinks that the Everyone else should like be super thankful that she's present because she's perfect. She's a goddess. Funny because there's an actual goddess as well. Uh, but like she, she, she thinks she's this amazing woman that like, oh, she's so extremely perfect in every way, and we should be groveling at her feet and just and kissing her feet just because she's even present and and she dares to bear her body before us. And I think that's a really interesting approach. I think. Because, because there's there's some characters that like are like that. They love themselves very much. And I think Sweetheart is like one of the perhaps one of my favorites, if not my favorite one yeah. that acts like that. 
where, where she where she, more than being interested in the other players, she's interested in herself. And I have to bring it up. Spoiler alert for anyone that hasn't played her. Her forfeit is fantastic because she she grabs a body pillow of herself and she starts pillow humping it. And that, that that's just fucking amazing. That's a, that's incredible. When I watched that, well, first I thought it was hot because I like pillow humping. It's it's a personal uh, uh, kink of mine. I like that. But also when I saw, it, I was like, this this is fucking amazing. This is the kind of shit that Spinati was made for. This kind of things that you just don't see elsewhere. So for that, you know, I I think Sweetheart is a great character. I think the main thing that she needs is like more lines. You know, she she just needs like more lines to flesh out her character and to explain you know a little bit more about what her, what her world is like, what she's like, what she does, and a bit more generics here and there so that she doesn't repeat herself too much. But beyond that, I I think she they they really did nail Sweetheart. She literally nails Sweetheart. Yeah, she does. <laughs> so. I- so, so I think like um, my own kind of obvious bend towards this aside, like like I really do appreciate that Sweetheart One matches to the style of Mari from Omori just to make sure that it's you know kind of consistent. That's really great, and I also think that she strikes a really interesting tonal balance between some of the other characters that are like this. Like Cagliostro is one of those where it's like she has a lot of strong personality and there's a lot of like megalomania to her, but there's still this ultimate element of like, yes, yes. I know you're like talking a big game, but there's like a genuine person under there that, you know, deserves to be treated with respect at the end of the day. And so, so I, I really like Cagliostro. I want to see Cagliostro and like sweetheart come to blows and maybe I'm misunderstanding Cag's character a little bit. I'm not trying to give her too much credit, but the sweetheart is the type of person you just want to like grab by the neck and just like, take the pound town sort of thing. Cause it's just like, Oh my God, you need to shut the fuck up now. And, <laughs> but like go for the instant loss through coma. Yeah. It's God. I just, anyway, I, I love this character. I just cannot, cannot articulate why, but she's just amazing. Uh, salt mine, you know, excellent work on aqua grunt. You are like fucking crushing it on this. It's also just like, it's been a while since there's been a character who's just like completely consistently mean and hostile. And I think like leaning into more of that because you, you know you have like Kutao who's like kind of just a troll, and then you have some of the other villain characters like Sweetheart's just such a bitch for like no reason, and it's great. Anyway, more of this. Yeah, mean characters are great because they give other characters a, an opportunity to use all of their angry poses that they never use. I, I also want to see her interact with like um, Queenie and just like have like the mutual insanity of these two characters back like bounce off each other. So in Sijuani, you are doing a real like. I'm not sure where the Unboro begins and these Insidiwani ends on the art side of the house, but like, goddamn, you know, like, oof, this is good. Like, I really, like, I honestly, like, it, it's, I tend to be a positive person on a lot of these stuff, but just like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, I don't know where to improve this character except for, like, fix the thing with, like, the hand behind the back not being obvious and then just go ham on target lines. This is fucking phenomenal. A plus. Good stuff. Is is Onboro moving mostly into like art contributions? Because I know he wrote Cora and like Sandy and Tess, but I don't know if he's writing anyone right now. I think Sandy and Tess tends to be his primary writing objective. I know he does a lot of art though. I think he does plan to potentially make another character, but I just want to entirely him. sure. I want to see him make Rukia from Bleach. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, Vermilion, That's who I want. Mm. Anyway, that's that's banana on bait, is what that is. Rukia, yeah, I can see it. So sweetheart. Yeah. So uh, salt mine um, talked about and memed about this character a lot, and posted about her. And generally, I didn't pay too close attention to that. It, it's nothing against him or or the character. It's just I tend not to care about a project too much and, until I can actually engage with it. And like when it actually hits testing, and when I hit testing, when she hit testing, I finally played her and read that her so- source was Omori. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what? This, no, this the Omori is always such a swerve. Donut princess is in the same game as the bitch that fell down some stairs and died, and everyone went in this existential crisis nightmare. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> you don't look like they're remotely from the same source material. I guess it really is some Earthbound shit. I don't know. I haven't played it. Uh, Earthbound still the OG. Working or uninspired indie games, just we like that, bro. What? The quirky uh, Earthbound inspired indie, indie games indie be just like that. Just like Undertale. Hey man, if all these games are inspired inspired by Earthbound, then you should just play Earthbound. Earthbound is a fun game, yeah. But man, um, the, anyway. the the indie games inspired by it have gotten real crazy. They have all sorts of insane fun shit. I just think it's funny how how I just I did not guess for a fucking second that these two were related. <laughs> But uh, yeah, like Basil and Mari, that makes sense. But I don't know what well, this chick is. Where did the hell did she come from? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Salt Mine put a lot of effort into this character, and that's the main thing I thought is that there is just a ton of high writing effort here, and it oh, must have sure. been it must have been a lot of effort for him because you know he, he's he, English is not his first language, and honestly, I don't think I I necessarily would have noticed if I didn't know that because. There are a lot of like really long-winded, rambly, you know, um, self-important lines, self-aggrandizing lines and rants that she goes on, and they they all hold together pretty well. Um, whatever effort he put into the the writing paid off in that respect because it came out really clean and really nice. One thing artistically that I I mentioned a bit on the Discord is that I know the whole was probably hard to make, but I do think it could use a little texture. I'm not sure how much of an adaptation this character is to begin with, but just the fact that it's a completely flat 2D hole really makes her look like a, a paper doll. That you know, the the paper doll that Kisuke makes her. It's you could I think it could use a little bit like a sort of a rounded edge to it and maybe a little bit of depth. You could see a little bit of like the I don't know what what would be on the inside uh, and a little squelching going on or maybe the cream that she's filled with. I don't know what kind of donut she is. I'm a personal fan of Boston cream, but um, yeah, she is literally a donut girl, apparently. Uh, let's see. Is it? I I don't know the source or how she talks in the source. Is it possible that there's a little bit more sweets theming? Because besides the whole, I don't really get a whole lot of donut energy from her at all. She didn't really talk about any kind of like sweets or pastries or confections or. Or anything like that. Mar Marinette and Sweetheart commit violence upon each other over a misunderstanding due to patisserie. Um, I mean, do you know? Do do either of you know if she ever talks about that? I mean, she, she's like donut themed. I, I, I never played Amori, so yeah. Well, once again, I'm going to be the good cop on the on the masturbation. I agree, I agree that the angle or the the bad cop. Um, I agree that the angles on the pillow are really well done. I just don't like how it ends up being a kneeling forfeit because I think kneeling forfeits are always really bad and boring because you can't see anything good. That's all I care about. I just want to see the goods. This, this is this is uh, to all the to all the the one um, ladies listening out there. Uh, men are actually super scared of vaginas. Most men don't actually like vaginas. They just pretend they they have a primal aversion to them. Now you really sounded like moist critical just now. Not me. I have a fetish. Not me. I have a fetish for for looking, uh, looking um, down the the trench, so to speak. God, it's true. Men have nightmares about your vagina having teeth. Well, that is a thing. I, but... I believe there's document. I believe there's a documentary about that actually. Uh, anyway, on that but note, yeah, um, uh, final thoughts. Uh, last thing I wanted to say is that, like, even though her shtick is really well done. Like in terms of like, oh, you know, oh, 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 I'm so important. I'm the great princess donut uh, sweetheart. Um, she often spoke about how characters were being boring and they were boring her, which ironically, I feel like talking about how boring someone is, is kind of in itself boring. I wish that she just kind of like went off and did her own thing in those cases a little bit more. Like instead of, you know, oh, this does nothing to please me. I wish she just like found ways to please herself instead like maybe she could like call over a servant, for instance, and just kind of do her own thing. I think like boring cases like that, like removing accessories. I think that's where you want to show how the character kind of acts when they're by themselves. And um, and the other thing is that her shtick, because she she's always so smug, I feel like her shtick kind of requires her to lose, and sort of have like that complete 
um, progression, which is something that doesn't always happen. Obviously, sometimes she she wins the game, um, which is a bit of a shame. But that's just the way characters are sometimes. You you could argue that that's not even really the case for her because she never really cracks. She is full on <laughs> in favor of herself the entire time. Even when she loses, she does not falter. So she's got that going for her. At least she sticks to it. She she means what she says. I, like I don't I don't think I don't sense any inferiority complex here. It's like projecting. No, she's just in, legitimately. She's just, she just is this way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an act. But yeah. Okay. That's the, that's the three um, full characters we're going to talk about today. We have one final entry for this episode. Yeah. So Toph is back and has gotten an art update. I honestly don't have a whole lot to say for my section. I thought Toph was great then. I think she's even better now and look forward to her making it into the whole game. Right. So Toph. No, the other thing with Toph is that she has actually, like, the process for her model has been, like, crazy. She has gone through a lot of refinements, a lot of models. Spaceman has been working on her model for, like, a fucking while. It's, it's, and it's been crazy. And, you know, she, like, she has, she has had a lot of feedback and some of that was like less than nice but i think that the final product the, the model that she has now i assume this is like actually going to be the final one i really i struggle to see how it can improve further like in many areas you know like it really feels like jesus this is the culmination of all that work and i think it looks fantastic and I think she's very expressive now. Like, like before she was expressive. I think she's really expressive now, and and in a way that like fits the Avatar style, right? Like the Avatar art style. I watched Avatar last year, and in that sense, I think like that Toph in Spinati is like very expressive, and she she her personality feels right at home. Like as far as being faithful to Avatar goes. Like, I think that uh, she she was written in a way that, like, yeah, this feels like tough. This is tough. This is, this, that's just like what tough would say. She has a lot of those lines where, like, she has, like, she gets bogged or she says a non sequitur and it's like, yeah, that's that's exactly like the shit tough would say. And, and you know, the, the, the obligatory blind jokes and stuff. And also the fact that, like, in, in Avatar, she's, like, actually super confident about her abilities even though she's blind like she, she doesn't let that let her down or drag her down i mean and in spanati it's just the same and you know it's it generally only comes off as like you know i don't really know how to uh make stripping look super sexy because i'm fucking blind and you know i thought that was funny and i thought yeah that's that's fitting right so i think the tough like you know model wise looks great and and writing wise you know i think she's she's really in character she has she's been captured very nicely really i think the main thing she needs is just more generic lines because on the, when when i played her she 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 did repeat herself more often than i would have liked so i think she needs like more generic lines and a couple of lines that like give them a play once so because you know sometimes feel weird when they're repeated over and over again so that's that's the main thing i think she needs more generic lines and you know her personality i feel really shines true so getting more of that is basically what it's like i want to I, I, i'm at a restaurant and i'm just ordering more tough give me more of that that's what i'm saying basically it's like i'm liking the food you're cooking spaceman keep cooking make more please that's what i'm saying and yeah, I, I think she's really nice. And one last price I want to give to her model is those baggy pants. That shit's like, that looks, like, I, I remember that was like annoying to make and I think they look great. So, you know, really nice job on that spaceman and really nice for, you know, sticking to her and making her as good as she is now. And I, I look forward to seeing her hit main. I think she, she would definitely will. I think you definitely have the skill necessary to make it happen. Uh, it's very courageous of Spaceman to just put out there that he has a foot fetish. You were supposed to laugh at that. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I wrote down that her, her writing didn't seem all that different from last time, and Spaceman pretty much just confirmed in chat that that's um, what happened. He was focusing mostly on art. That's fine. 
Um, all the way back in episode 60, when we first covered Toph, uh, I said I, I had a lot of criticism, uh, criticisms about her art. I thought she looked a little too lanky and basically uh, like a little too curvy. She didn't have that like wide, boxy kind of power stance um, aesthetic that I saw in like reference and, and concept art, which seemed really integral to the portrayal of the character. And he, he seemed to take that to heart. I think he specifically mentioned that feedback in, in making this update. And I think it really came together well. Like the tunic looks boxy, your sleeves and the baggy pants, like you said it all. It's got a lot of like rectangular kind of shapes to it. So her, her silhouette carries very nicely. And, and she's like got some, some sort of like boxy tone to her too when she's naked and like some depth without looking like unattractive. And I think it's a, I, I think overall it's just a very nice, um, well executed adaptation. Like she needed a lot of time in the oven, but it, it, it came out uh, really nice. Like it's just um, even like, like the age up even looks really nice. Like, cause she looks like a little bit lankier and, and taller cause she's supposed to be older, but it still looks recognizably like her overall. And now she's got like the sort of like the general shape of the character that I think you really need to sell it. And that's what she's got. And I, uh, I really like it. She looks much more complete. Let's see a couple last. Oh yeah. She's very expressive. I think she could use a couple more like actual sexy faces. <laughs> Whatever, or at least like you know something that looks a little bit more attractive and not goofy. Uh, I think that's something you could say about the writing if you want to go into writing advice uh, and more. It's like yeah, she's like a goofy, crass kind of character, but it, you, you, I am still kind of left wondering what she's actually into because she just she's always just cracking jokes up until the until the very end. You want to see like what exactly she's she's into, what does get her to react. Yeah, good custom strips, good custom arms, and all all those things that I probably mentioned last time. And uh, some something I noticed that because I've been doing it more is um, good post forfeit like global lines, where, where you have like a little sequence. Bef- like it can be like leading into the forfeit as well, but especially after the forfeit, where they're kind of catching their breath and standing back up, and they really don't need to be reacting to anything that's going on. Just have a nice little sequence of them like moving like transitioning into the finished stage, I think is, uh, I think caps off the character really nicely. So overall, yeah, very, very positive changes. I'm glad he, he managed to get this out because it, it took a lot of work and it took a lot of time. And, um, I'm looking forward to more. Do any of you, do either of you have any final thoughts on Toph or any of the characters we've talked about today or Kisuke uh, updates for that matter? I just want to say, Thank you, Biss, for sacrificing your free time that much to make Kizuke fucking good. It's like the industrial revolution of Kizuke, and it's all thanks to him, man. It's amazing. Kizuke, but good. Oh, yeah, I guess we should mention well, one, of the, one of the changes in the oven is um, upgrading from 99 ribbon slots and belts and things to 999. <laughs> My god. Which is not integrated yet. Remember when we all... No, 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 uh, yes, it is actually. Oh, wait, no. Not in the official version, but there is like a, a beta version where it is. We uh, I gotta say, I mean, I don't, I don't do a lot of KCK work, but having that much flexibility, it's, it's going to be a godsend. So many shit that had to be done in like a specific way, use multiple models. Now it's going to be like, now I don't have to do that. It's amazing. You know, like, uh, I mean, we all thought, we all thought that... Um, that 99 ribbons would be more than we would ever need because um, default Kisuke that you can find online only has 30 slots, which I can't even imagine. But uh, we all thought 99 would be enough forever, and it turns out it wasn't. Who knows? Maybe one day, be like, God, I really wish we could have <laughs> not 99,000 slots. It's like, fuck, man, I can't believe we have just 1,000 ribbons. That's like nothing. How am I supposed to make my character one-to-one like this? Like, come on. I mean, you know, we once thought that the ocean would hold all of our trash forever. And, uh, well, look where we are now. Except this is not really trash. This is more like art. We thought that the, that the world would hold all of our people forever. And that there would always be a new frontier. Turns out the new frontier is, uh, is crossover strip games online. 
deep shit. Deep lore. Uh, I also want to make a quick plug for the character feedback poll. The, uh, the annual summer character feedback poll that uh, should be up and running right now as uh, or when this podcast episode is released, episode 72. So, please go out there. Uh, you can find the link in the game itself and on the Reddit and various uh, you know, Discord servers and such, but uh, you can leave any kind of anonymous feedback, positive or negative, for any character, including those on the testing roster. So any, anyone on, online, anyone on the main roster or on the test roster. Please give them a try. Please give characters a try if you haven't tried them in a while. And, uh, and, and give your feedback. See what... Because uh, uh, people always love hearing what, what they can improve on and what they, what they did really well. People love that, that to, uh, to read that kind of praise and, and criticism. Uh, I, I, it's been a while. Uh, the last one was, I think, 18 months ago because I, I, I wanted to wait and uh, get them back on the, the summer-winter schedule and ha- have the character feedback in the summer as it was before. But yeah, it's, uh, it's out now. Please go try it. Uh, please give it a look. Uh, hopefully it'll be linked in the podcast description as well. Any final thoughts from either of you? No, um, that all sounds good to me. As, as this episode's concluding? Well, it's, I mean, it's, uh, all I have to say, it's been a pleasure being here, you know, this game means a lot to me. The community means a lot to me. It has been a lot of fun being here, and I hope I'll be able to you know, stick around for a long time and make a lot of more fun characters that people will enjoy. But yeah, you know, it's just it's been a fun time being here, and I hope, I hope to see more of everything, really. And I hope to see people continue making projects and succeeding. Yeah. Um, and dude, thanks for, thanks for coming on. It's always been a pleasure to work for you, and I'm Happy to see that you'll be uh, working on the game for quite some time to come. Unless I get hit by a truck. Yeah, don't get us a guy. That would be that would be disappointing for a lot of us. Oh, you'll you'll finally meet you'll finally meet. I Aqua. mean, I would I would see Aqua then. I could meet Aqua. It's <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on, uh, my man's. Thanks for co-hosting as always, the Masp. Uh, We're going to sign off for this one. All right. Until next time. Well, that's the end of this podcast. Remember to rate the podcast, comment the podcast, and subscribe if you want to see podcasts similar to this one. See ya. And send us our money. And I've always found that very compelling. Hold on. Sorry. uh, One moment. No, you're good, man. What's up? What's up? What's up? You want to make out later? No. No. Okay, sorry. I am back. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good. That's a good outtake. That's a good outtake. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, where was I? Right. Oh, my man. Do you want to make out later? <laughs> Absolutely. Totally. Well, now okay. I look like a shuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay.